and welcome to this special segment uh, from TIA's 5G Breakfast here in Boston, Massachusetts. We have Steve Smiley with Verizon and Rajesh Mishra with Parallel Wireless talking about densifying the network that to support 5G networks and ultimately a smart city. And Steve and Rajesh, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being here. So, uh, Steve, I'm going to start with you just really on a high level. Uh, what are you trying to provide for this smart community pilot in conjunction with uh, the city of Boston? And do you feel confident that they will get what they want as far as um, supporting 5G really and also supporting a smart city? So the smart city pilot we're doing in Boston is around Vision Zero. Vision Zero is an initiative <coughs> that is uh, how do you eliminate traffic uh, incidents um, and ultimately any incident is actually a failure of the system. So. Um, what we're doing is working very closely with the city of Boston to define the types of data we can gather, not, not the technology associated with it, but the types of data. So things like um, how, do we, how do we identify the speed of approaching vehicles to an intersection? How do we determine that uh, a car is turned left on red while somebody is in the crosswalk? Um, those are the types of components that we can very strictly quantify. And what that does is it allows us to set a baseline and then turn around and make behavioral changes working with the city and then see the impact of those. Uh, the majority of Vision Zero today really identifies positive change by looking for reductions in accidents or, or incidents taking people to the hospital. So this gives us a very quanti quantitative uh, quantifiable measurement of uh, setting a baseline and then seeing what we're doing. In regards to setting the stage for 5G, um, quite honestly, this is done with 4G and the current technologies that are available today. Yeah, and just to add to that, uh, as you're deploying sensors or the technologies for the Vision Zero or beyond, I think what's great is would be if the platform is wider than just the focus or just the initial reason why it exists. For example, if you're deploying, let's say, 4G or 5G technology for Vision Zero, maybe the data is also showing other patterns there, the weather, what happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was not the initial focus. Or providing maybe a Wi-Fi coverage to moving vehicles there, too. So when we look at it as a platform, you need one excuse or one reason to install it but the innovation on the back end and openness on the back end allows other technologies to ride, or the secondary use cases to ride, for example, first responders or Wi-Fi or other technologies. And, and, and two, two components there. It's uh, Vision Zero is very much about sharing information. Yeah. It started in Sweden almost 20 years ago, widely adopted throughout the US in the last few years, and it's all about every city sharing the information, so that'll be shared. The other component I'd, I'd, I'd add to yours is around an IoT platform. And what we've done is we've actually taken numerous different technologies, whether that's sensors in the road, uh, sensing speed, whether that's cameras with video analytics, uh, and then using uh, our Verizon ThingSpace mm -hmm. IoT platform mm -hmm. to actually correlate that yeah. data. And that's very much an open platform, yeah. exactly yeah. to provide the innovation yeah. you're describing yeah. of, of uh, once you have sensor networks, yeah. what can you effectively yeah. do with them? I, I think the way we look at it as innovators is not to imagine the innovation. In our job is, and I would agree, and I would imagine Verizon's job is to provide a platform so that people can imagine things. Like Uber, I did not imagine it, but you know, we made the base station, for example, Verizon has provided the network, and Uber innovation are any other innovation of that nature. Somebody else needs to innovate and we should not be a roadblock on that. So that's really where the platform needs to be so open that any innovation can ride on it. And that's really as we are investing in the technology or infrastructure. That's the primary yeah, aim. I, I, so I look at, um, you provide the underlying communication layer, you provide uh, an IoT type platform, and ultimately you can think of them as tools in a toolbox that you enable um, for people much smarter than, than us, quite honestly, to, to come up with very innovative solutions. And that's, that's ultimately how we'll advance um, yeah. on numerous fronts. 
So we, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're uh, just coming off TIA's 5G breakfast. There was an interview or a panel discussion rather with the chief information, in, information officer of Boston. Uh, you said something pretty interesting to me. You, you kind of skipped past the technology and, and what you would expect uh, a service provider to talk about as far as ROI. And you immediately talked about citizen en engagement and giving sort of the city back to the people. Can you, can you elaborate on that a little bit? We have a great partnership with the city of Boston and, and Yasha as well as the uh, transportation department and the urban mechanics departments are, are great partners. Um, we've been successful because uh, we do focus on what are the ultimate solutions we can provide. So in regards to uh, the technology associated with something like a digital kiosk that we did an acquisition last fall with liquid Wi-Fi and it's something we're very excited about but the but the real value associated with it is is how do you drive the citizen engagement and the value of having this technology in place and so that's um, all the way down to how do you give the uh, to the citizens how do you give the city and the interaction with the city back to them how do you uh, allow citizens within a community uh, to share information effectively between each other whether that's a you know a, a Sunday afternoon barbecue block party you know, uh, uh, you know, a garage sale, um, those types of components, there's, there's technology that we can provide that allows that communication and to build community as well as how to interact with the city. Um, so we think that's very important and that's an important part of the citizen engagement. So we're just, uh, after, or just prior to the panel discussion that we just talked about, uh, there were some presentations by yourself, uh, some slide presentations by Steve Smiley as well, and by the CIO. The CIO said, um, I'm open for business, right? What's your immediate thought when he says that? What's the challenge in, in collaborating with the municipality? Uh, actually, City of Boston has been one of the best we work with around the world, not only just the U.S., is actually the way I look at it is as a platform. When they say open for business, doesn't necessarily mean I'm here with my checkbook. Mm -hmm. Open for business means if you got innovation, we will work with you and trying to see how I can make my city better. That's really how I took it. And personally, the way I took it is um, they wanted to solve the connectivity problem to the city. And if you look at the broader Massachusetts, um, you know, th my data is two years old. But Western Mass, there are some police stations, they use a 56 kilobits per second dial-up to connect those stations. Those are kind of the challenges, actually. He, he may not have that broad of these type of challenges, but there are still portions of people who are not connected because the, where they are located, maybe there's not infrastructure available. So he's looking for innovations and partnership where he can solve those problems. Steve, uh, and maybe not particular to the city of Boston, but are, are, on the business side of, of uh, the discussion, are you involved in making uh, the deployment more cost effective for the city? And again, not particularly for Boston, but maybe for a prior project. It's, um, it's got to be cost effective, so no doubt. Um, and as we densify our network, as we uh, perform additional fiber deployments in advance of, well, with the continued expansion of 4G as well as 5G, um, there's very much an opportunity to, uh, to make that more cost effective and deploy other capabilities at the same time. Now those capabilities, as Rajesh was indicating, very much need to be solving a problem and an identified problem. Um, but I do feel we very much have a responsibility to be as cost effective. There, there's dig once policies, you know, nobody likes to have their street torn up. And so as you do it, do it once. Um, and deploy as many capabilities as you can, or at least future-proof, um, to allow for those in the future. And the uh, you know, the lower cost deployment, we as Parallel Wireless, we look from automation perspective, because most of the time the site installation is handled by the operators groups, or like city themselves. So where we come in from is we try to say, what can we automate and take the cost away from sure. the system? or where we can leverage the existing technologies so we are not necessarily trying to say replace all the street poles with a smarter one. How we can make the things smarter which are already existent and lower cost. And that's where we are adding a lot of value and that's what we see people appreciate because we, they want to reuse what they have because they have paid for it and they want it to last longer. So some of the examples 
if there's a less horizon infrastructure, we could use existing infrastructure to serve public safety, for example. We don't need to build the new fiber, the new backhaul, new everything. All you need is a new wireless technology, which is uh, band class 14 for public safety. So those are kind of the innovations. Cities and towns of people who are at the end of the day paying for it are looking for saying that I already have this. I already dug my street once. Why are we doing it again? And it just manifests itself differently for different use cases. Um, so that's where we come in trying to innovate by looking at a solution. That's actually a, um, you know, what you described on the installation side is really an opportunity for public private partnerships and that, um, uh, you know, many of the service providers need, need to lay this information, uh, need to, to lay conduit, lay fiber, deploy small cells without you know, at the same time, dejunctifying uh, the environment, um, and and you know, do that in such a way to minimize impact. But also, uh, if there are other resources there that the city may own, whether that's conduit, whether that's fiber, um, that's one of the main components of a public-private partnership. The attachment rates associated with the equipment um, that does get installed is another opportunity. And so, as technology gets deployed to meet things like smart city needs, um, public-private partnerships to do those other components that we as a service provider need are really comp key. The other thing I would add, you, you, you mentioned in regards to installation and automation, um, as we add more technology throughout the world, uh, the maintenance side of it and the, the um, keeping it secure and keeping it updated, I mean, these are all going to be, you know, computers and IP addressable components that are going to have to be effectively managed and that's um, that's a huge responsibility for my opinion and one that uh, I believe as a service provider we're really well positioned to support. And sometimes you know when it comes to the cost or trying to lower the cost something that gets overlooked if you take any of the major telecommunication vendors revenues from their public data you'll notice most of majority more than 50 percent of their revenue actually comes from their services business, mm -hmm. not from equipment business. So, you know, when, when normal, like you and I talk, we always talk how I can lower the cost of this hardware or the software, but the other segment, that, uh, the only way you can reduce the majority of the cost is actually by the automation, which can take care of all these things. Instead of sending the humans around and exactly. trying to make the work, you have to automate everything. You're both solutions providers. Uh, it's interesting, you, and I heard this in the panel as well, uh, you're both really coming from a value statement, from um, a value model, if you will. So assessing those metrics and uh, collecting that data, uh, we don't really know the true value of that yet. We're, I guess it sounds like you're getting there, but you have a number of uh, steps to take to realize the true value of a smart community, right? Sure, sure. So it'd be interesting to kind of track that and follow you guys. So thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I you appreciate it. Me.